Ember Saturday, 16th week after Pentecost, morning meditation, September 26th, 2020. Meditations taken from Meditations and Readings for Every Day of the Year by St. Alphonsus de Liguori, Bishop and Doctor of the Church, First Choice as Teacher in Moral Theology, Act of Faith in the Presence of God, in nomine Patri, Filii, Spiritus Sancti, Amen, Most Holy, Adorable, and Undivided Trinity, One God in Three Persons, I believe that Thou art here present. I adore thee with the deepest humility, and render to thee with my whole heart the homage which is due to thy sovereign majesty. Grant me the grace to pray as I ought. Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. O blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God and my Mother, I ask for the grace to continue to pray. Christian soul, reflect on these every day of your life. There is one God to glorify, one eternity to prepare for, saints and angels to call upon, one life to use well, one body to mortify, one death to suffer, one hell to avoid, one judgment to confront, one Jesus to imitate, one soul to save, neighbors to edify, one world to be detached from, sins to expiate for, passions to subject to our will, virtues to acquire, one heaven to win. Act of Humility, Litany of Humility. O Jesus, meek and humble of heart, hear me. From the desire of being esteemed, the living Jesus. From the desire of being loved, the living Jesus. From the desire of being extolled, the living Jesus. From the desire of being honored, the living Jesus. From the desire of being praised, the living Jesus. From the desire of being preferred to others, the living Jesus. From the desire of being consulted, the living Jesus. From the desire of being approved, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being humiliated, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being despised, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being of suffering rebukes, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being calumniated, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being forgotten, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being ridiculed, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being wronged, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being suspected, deliver me, Jesus. That others may be loved more than I, Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may be esteemed more than I, Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may be, that in the opinion of the world, others may increase and I may decrease. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may be chosen and I set aside, Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may be praised and I unnoticed, Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may be preferred to me in everything. Jesus, grant me grace to desire it. That others may become holier than I, provided that I may become as holy as I should. Jesus, grant me grace to desire it. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, we ask for your guidance in this our morning meditation through the intercession of thy blessed Mother Mary, ever Virgin. Ave Maria, gratia, pana dominus tecum. Benedicta tu in mulieribus, and benedictus fructus ventris tu Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei. Or Penobis Peccatoribus, Nuc Nihor Mortis Nostre. Amen. In honor of Saint Joseph, our guardian angel, and all the saints, we pray Gloria Patria, Filio, Spiritus Sancto, Secret Eract in Principio, Nuc et Semper, Secula, Seculorum. Amen. Come, Holy Ghost, fill the hearts of thy faithful, and kindle in them the fire of thy love. Send forth thy spirit, and shall be created. And you shall renew the face of the earth. Let us pray. O God, who did instruct the hearts of the faithful, by the light of the Holy Ghost, grant in that same spirit that we may be truly wise, ever to rejoice in his consolation. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Morning meditation. The Blessed Virgin's love of God. Our Lady revealed to St. Bridget that in this world she never had a thought, a desire, or a joy, but in God and for God. Mary did not so much repeat acts of love of God like other saints. Her whole life was one of continued act of divine charity. Our Lady revealed to St. Bridget that in this world she never had a thought, a desire, or a joy, but in and for God. Quote, I thought, she said, of nothing but God. Nothing pleased me but God. Unquote. So that her blessed soul, being in the almost continual contemplation of God whilst on earth, the acts of love which she formed were innumerable. 
As Father Suarez writes, quote, the acts of perfect charity formed by the Blessed Virgin in this life were without number. For nearly the whole of her life was spent in contemplation. And in that state, she constantly repeated acts of love. Unquote. But a remark of Bernadine de Bustis pleases me still more. He says that Mary did not so much repeat acts of love as other saints do, but that her whole life was one continued act of love. For by a special privilege, she always actually loved God. As a royal eagle, she always kept her eyes fixed on the divine Son of Justice. Quote, so that, as St. Peter Damien says, the duties of active life did not prevent her from loving, and love did not prevent her from attending to those duties. Unquote. Therefore, St. Germanus says that the altar of propitiation, on which the fire was never extinguished day or night, was a type of Mary. Nor was sleep an obstacle to Mary's love for God since, as St. Augustine asserts, quote, the dreams when sleeping of our first parents in their state of innocence were as happy as their lives when waking, unquote. And if such a privilege was granted them, it certainly cannot be denied that it was also granted to the Divine Mother, as Suarez, the Abbot Rupert, and St. Bernadine fully admit. St. Ambrose is also of this opinion, Speaking of Mary, he says, quote, While her body rested, her soul watched, unquote. verifying in herself the words of the wise man, quote, Her lamp shall not be put out in the night. Proverbs 31 18. Yes, for a while, her blessed body took its necessary repose and gentle sleep. Quote, her soul, says St. Bernardine, freely tended towards God, so much so that she was then wrapped in more perfect contemplation than any other person ever was when awake. Unquote. Therefore, could she well say with the spouse in the Canticles, quote, I sleep and my heart watcheth. Canticles 5, verse 2. Quote, as, as happy in sleep as when awake, unquote, as Sora says. And fine, St. Bernadine asserts that as long as Mary lived in this world, she was continually loving God. Quote, the mind of the Blessed Virgin was always wrapped in the order of love. Unquote. The saint, moreover, adds that, quote, she never did anything that the divine wisdom did not show her to be pleasing to him, and that she loved God as much as she thought he was to be loved by her. Unquote. Indeed, according to Blessed Albert the Great, we can well say that Mary was filled with so great charity that greater was not possible in any pure creature on earth. Hence, St. Thomas of Villanova affirms that by her ardent charity, the Blessed Virgin became so beautiful and so enamored of her God that, captivating as it were by her love, he descended into her womb and became man. Wherefore, St. Bernadine exclaims, quote, Behold the power of the Virgin Mother. She wounded and took captive the heart of God. Unquote. As Mary herself loved God so much that there can be nothing she requires more of her clients than that they also should love him to their utmost. This precisely she one day told Blessed Angela of Folgione, Foligno, after communion, saying, quote, Angela, be thou blessed by my son, and endeavor to love him as much as thou canst, unquote. She also said to St. Bridget, quote, Daughter, if thou desirest to bind me to thee, love my son, unquote. Mary desires nothing more than to see her beloved, who is God, loved. Novarinus asks why the Blessed Virgin, with the spouse in the canticles, 
begged the angels to make the great love she bore him known to our Lord, saying, quote, I adjure you, O daughters of Jerusalem, if you find my beloved, that you tell him that I languish with love. Canticles 5, verse 8. Did not God know how much she loved him? Why did she seek to show the wound to her beloved, since it was, since he it was who had inflicted it? Unquote. Same author answers that the Divine Mother thereby wished to make her love known to us, not to God. She, as it were, she, that that as she was herself wounded, so might she also be able to wound us with divine love. And quote, because Mary was all on fire and with the love of God, and who love and approached her are inflamed by her with this same love. For she renders them like unto herself, unquote. For this reason, St. Catherine of Siena called Mary, quote, the bearer of fire, unquote. The bearer of the flames of divine love. If we also desire to burn with these blessed flames, let us endeavor always to draw nearer to our mother by our prayers and the affections of our souls. Ah, Mary, thou queen of love, of all creatures, the most amiable, the most beloved, the most loving, as St. Francis de Sales called thee, my own sweet mother, that was always and in all things inflamed with love towards God. Deign then to bestow at least a spark of it on me. Thou dost pray thy son for the spouses whose wine had failed. Quote, they have no wine. John 2 verse 3. And wilt thou now pray for us, in whom the love of God, whom we are under such obligations to love, is wanting? Say also, they have no love, and obtain us this love. This is the only grace for which we ask. O mother, by the love thou bearest to Jesus, graciously hear us and pray for us. Amen. Spiritual Reading Novenas in honor of our Blessed Lady. The devout clients of Mary are all care and fervor in celebrating novenas, or nine days prayer, preceding her festivals. And the Blessed Virgin is all love in dispensing innumerable and most special graces to them. St. Gertrude one day saw under Mary's mantle a band of souls whom the Great Lady was considering with the most tender affection. She was given to understand that they were persons who, during the preceding days, had prepared themselves by various devotions for the Feast of the Assumption. The following devotions are some of those which may be used during the Novenas. 1. We may make mental prayer in the morning and evening and a visit to the Blessed Sacrament, adding nine times the Our Father, Hail Mary, and Glory be to the Father. 2. We may pay Mary three visits, visit visiting her statue or picture, and thank our Lord for the graces he granted his Blessed Mother, and each time ask the Blessed Virgin for some special grace. Three, we may make many acts of love towards Mary, at least 50 or 100, and also towards Jesus, for we can do nothing that pleases her more than to love her son, as she said to St. Bridget, If thou wishes to bind thyself to me, love my son. 4. We may read every day of the Novena for a quarter of an hour, some book that treats of her glories. 5. We may perform some external mortification, such as a fast, abstain from fruit, or some favorite dish, or at least a part of it, or chew some bitter herbs. On the vigil of the feast, we may fast on bread and water. But none of these things should be done without the permission of one's confessor. Interior mortifications, however, are the best of all to practice during these novenas, such as to avoid looking at or listening to things out of curiosity. To remain in retirement, observe silence, be obedient, not to give impatient answers, to bear contradictions and such things, which can all be practiced with less danger of vanity, with greater merit, and which do not need the confessor's permission. The most useful exercise is to propose from the beginning of the novena to correct some fault 
into which we fall the most frequently. For this purpose, it would be well, in the visit spoken of above, to ask pardon for past faults, to renew our resolutions not to commit them any more, and to implore Mary's help. The devotion most dear and pleasing to Mary is to endeavor to imitate her virtues. Therefore, it would be well always to propose to ourselves the imitation of some virtue that corresponds to the festival. As, for example, the feast of her Immaculate Conception, purity of intention. For her nativity, renewal of fervor to throw off tepidity. For her presentation, detachment from something to which we are most attached. For her annunciation, humility in supporting contempt. For her visitation, charity towards our neighbor, giving alms or at least praying for sinners. For her purification, obedience to superiors. And finally, for the feast of her assumption, let us endeavor to detach ourselves from the world, do all to prepare ourselves for death, and regulate each day of our lives as if it was to be our last. Besides going to communion on the day of the feast, n number six, besides going to communion on the day of the feast, it would be well to ask leave from our confessor to go more frequently during the novena. Father Sergerny used to say that we cannot honor Mary better than with Jesus. She herself revealed to a holy soul, as Father Cresset relates, that we can offer her nothing that is more pleasing to her than holy communion. For in that sacrament, it is Jesus gathers the fruit of his passion in our soul. Hence, it appears that the Blessed Virgin desires nothing so much of her clients as communion, saying, quote, Come, eat my bread and drink the wine which I have mingled for you. Proverbs 9, verse 5. 7. Finally, on the day of the feast, after Holy Communion, we must offer ourselves to the service of this Divine Mother and ask her the grace to practice the virtue we had proposed to ourselves during the Novena. It is well every year to choose amongst the feasts of the Blessed Virgin one for which we have the greatest and most tender devotion, and for this one to make a very special preparation by dedicating ourselves anew and in a more particular manner to her service, choosing her for our Sovereign Lady, Advocate, and Mother. Then we must ask her pardon for all our negligence in her service during the past year and promise greater fidelity for the next and conclude by begging her to accept us for her servants and to obtain us a holy death. Concluding prayer. I give thee thanks, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, for the light which thou now bestowest upon me. I make a firm purpose of my will that I may, in uniformity with your divine will, O triune God, keep my resolutions and keep them well. For the love of thee and thy mother, the Blessed Virgin Mary, so that through her intercession I may receive by her loving hands the grace to be ever faithful to my resolutions, my state in life and rule of life, now until the hour of my death. I give thee thanks, O God, for the patience with which thou hast hitherto borne with me. I see that, although I forgot thee, thou didst not forget me. I am sorry, my sovereign good, for having turned my back upon thee, and I am now resolved to give myself entirely to thee. And why should I delay? That thou mayest abandon me, and that death may find me as miserable and ungrateful as I have been even until now. No, my God, I will no more offend thee, but will love thee. I love thee, O oh, infinite goodness. Give me perseverance and thy holy love. I ask for nothing more. Mary, refuge of sinners, intercede for all the holy souls in purgatory and for all poor sinners, particularly myself. In nomen Apache, Fili, Spiritu Sancti, Amen. Have a blessed morning and day, O slaves of Mary.